Hey guys, I'm Andrew from MCAT Self Prep, and in this video, I'm going to show you a short snippet from my live car strategy session. You know, over the years, I've helped a lot of students with cars, and I've noticed that other companies tend to teach so many strategies that students get overwhelmed trying to use all of them while approaching their cars passages. And what I've found is that when you can have a single approach to cars and develop consistency from there, you're gonna be much more successful than trying to implement 20 different strategies at once when you're approaching these cars passages. So in my live car strategy session, my goal is to help you understand the one thing that's gonna help you get better at cars if you implement it consistently over time. I'm really confident that you're gonna get a lot out of this strategy session. If you enjoy the snippet that you see here today, go ahead and head over to mcatselfprep.com to watch the full 60 minute strategy session. And if you have any questions, be sure to reach out. I'm here to help. And I just want to say thanks so much for being here with me and taking the time to join me for this event. It's totally worth your time. And I'm so excited to jump into today's power topics. First, we will be discussing the five approaches to cars that do not work. These are very commonly taught by other prep companies, and it can be very easy to fall for these approaches. So it is very important that we avoid these at all costs. Second, I will teach you the one cars approach that always works. This is what you need to focus on as you invest study time into cars. Using this one approach consistently over time will improve your car score. After that, I will show you three proven research-based comprehension strategies. I will walk you through an AAMC passage, just like I do with my private tutoring students as we learn these strategies together. And at the very end of the session, I will provide you with links to over 100 free cars passages. This will allow you to start practicing these strategies right away. Now, before we dive in, I'm going to ask you to give me your full focus and attention by closing out of all your, of your other internet tabs and browsers. Not only will this help you focus better, but it will also allow the audio and video to run more smoothly on your computer. Also, make sure you are in a location free of distractions. You won't want to miss any of today's session. Now, how many of you guys have seen one of my YouTube videos? Go ahead and type yes into the chat if you've seen me on YouTube. It looks like we've got quite a few people who have seen me out on YouTube. That's fantastic. Good to, good to see you've uh, encountered me there. That's awesome. And how many of you guys are already using my free e-course? Awesome. Awesome. That's great. This is fantastic, guys. And, you know, whether or not you've already been using these materials or not, you are still likely wondering who I really am. You may have heard that I scored in the 99th percentile on the MCAT, that I've worked one-on-one -on -one with hundreds of pre-meds, and that I've helped several of my students achieve 100th percentile MCAT scores. But you may not know that this is what I looked like when I was in fifth grade. Attractive, right? Type attractive into the chat if you agree. <laughs> All right. Looks like I got a sympathetic attractive there. Oh, a hottie. Awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, just look at those wings, right? I had quite the hairdo. <laughs> okay, so the point I'm trying to make here is that I was a little bit chubby back then. Now, despite my weight, when I was in seventh grade, I actually became very interested in long distance running. And when I first joined the track team, Charlie, the fastest mile runner on our team at the time, said, when Andrew does the triple jump, the whole earth shakes. Well, these comments and others like them failed to get me down. To the contrary, they motivated me to work as hard as I could. I soon set the goal to become the fastest mile runner in the school. In addition to track practices and weekend runs, I would actually run to and from school. At first, the other runners laughed at me, but they didn't laugh long because by the end of eighth grade, I achieved my goal and became the fastest mile runner. I even earned the nickname of Tank for my large stature and steady race pace. I continued running throughout high school and became the fastest runner on, in the school by my sophomore year. Sadly, that's also when I got injured to the point of no return during my sophomore year. It was completely devastating but caused me to reflect on what really matters in life. At that time, 
I decided to dedicate myself more fully to serving others, and it was then that I decided that I wanted to become a physician. I became more invested in my schoolwork and actually became very interested in studying the science of learning. I read all kinds of books about the very best way to learn, eventually developing my unique note carding method that I used throughout college to earn a 4.0 as a pre-med. Everything was going great until the MCAT came along. Without the $3,000 course that my friends were using, I felt pretty lost about how I should approach it. But just as I did with running back in middle school, I set a goal and I worked hard to achieve it. I learned a lot along the way and eventually achieved my goal score, the 99th percentile. Since then, I am happy to say that I've helped several of my students achieve scores higher than my own, the 100th percentile. But what I'm most proud of are the students who I've helped improve. I loved working with my student, Mike, who improved on his previous MCAT attempt by 11 points. I had a blast working with Mahmoud, who overcame hurdles such as having English as a second language to improve his score from a 495 to a 510. But my greatest moment of all was helping my student, Bryn, who overcame her first low MCAT attempt of a 488 to achieve a 514, a 26-point improvement. There were several tutoring sessions that we both cried during and tons of work along the way, but eventually she reached her goal score with the very same breakdown she was aiming for. It is these experiences that have inspired me to devote my career to helping students overcome this challenging exam and fulfill their dreams. And that is why I'm having this session with you today, to help you destroy this totally frustrating exam. And the most annoying section of all for most students is definitely the CARS section. And this was certainly the case for Bryn. While her other section scores were steadily improving, the car section just seems to be taunting her, refusing to budge. That is, until she truly understood and implemented my car strategies. Once the correct way to approach cars finally clicked for her, her score began to steadily move up, ultimately increasing from the 35th percentile on her first MCAT attempt to the 82nd. How many of you would like to see this kind of improvement? Type yes into the chat if you would want this to happen to your score. All right, sounds like you guys came to the right place. <laughs> awesome, I'm seeing a lot of yeses and that's why we're meeting today, to help you improve your car score. Now, I won't promise you that today's session is going to result in the kind of jump that Bryn and several of my students have achieved, but I can tell you that learning the strategies I will be teaching you today are guaranteed to improve your score. With the right amount of time and effort, your score will improve. Now, before we dive into the CARS approach that will always work, let's discuss five seemingly good yet poor approaches to CARS. The five approaches to CARS that do not work. First of all, let's discuss passage outlining techniques. How many of you have heard that you should write a summary at the end of every paragraph? <laughs> I saw someone say Kaplan, yeah. That's where, it's, that's where you'll find it, in the Kaplan book and several other places. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people have heard of this approach. And it's a very commonly taught CARS approach. And it's an example of a passage outlining technique. And when I was studying for the MCAT, I encountered this technique in a CARS book from one of the major prep companies. And it seemed like a good thing to do at first, but it threw off my timing to the point that I was scoring worse than before I had applied the so-called strategy. Now, I believe that this strategy can work sometimes. Here's what I mean. It may work for some students. For instance, it may be very helpful for students who are rushing and need to slow down and spend more time thinking about what they read. It may also work for some students on some passages. For example, it might be very useful on a passage with only three to four paragraphs. But here's the issue. What about students who are already struggling with timing? And what about passages that have five, six, or even seven paragraphs? What then? And that's why I refer to these so-called strategies as cheap tricks. They only work for some of the time for some people. For this reason, some students may see rapid improvements while others see none at all. These cheap tricks may be easy to learn and implement, but they do not actually change the way your brain thinks. To truly succeed on cars, you need to completely revamp your way of thinking. Next, let's discuss question type approaches. Taking even just a short glance at all the CARS strategies out there, 
you are certain to encounter techniques revolving around the different question types that you will encounter on the MCAT. They will walk you through many different question types, including main idea questions, implication questions, inference questions, application of information questions, and the list goes on and on. How many of you guys have heard of these question types before? All right, it looks like some of you guys have heard of this. Now, does the AMC use specific question types when they are generating questions for cars? Sure. And might there be different approaches needed for these different types of questions? Of course. But while you are taking the car section, do you have time to whip out your mental Rolodex of all the different question types, identify the question type, and apply the multi-step strategy recommended for that question type? And even if you had time for that, would it work every time? I highly doubt it, as even questions within the same type will require radically different approaches. But the major issue I see with this cheap trick is that it treats the MCAT like it is some sort of game. That if you can just memorize the right cheat codes and formulas, you can get a top score. The MCAT is trying to determine who has what it takes to become a doctor. And the AAMC has done an incredibly good job at creating such a test. We don't want doctors who just memorize cheat codes as a means to getting through their education. The MCAT is very good at what it aims to test you on. And for this reason, cheat codes will not work. Similar to learning all the question types, some programs will have you memorize all the different answer choice pathologies. These are the reasons for an answer choice to be incorrect. Once again, there are many of these the too narrow answer choice, the out of context answer choice, the too broad answer choice, and so on and so forth. Now, it isn't a bad idea to be able to put into words why an answer choice is incorrect. But why do we need to memorize all these different types? It's the Rolodex issue all over again. It's the cheat code mentality in different form. But the thing that really irks me about these cheap tricks is this. When a smart student sits down and scores a 132 on the car section on their very first try, they are not using these tactics. For instance, my little brother is the perfect example of this. He just took the MCAT and scored a 131 on the car section. You know what he got on the car section of his first practice exam? A 131. Now, before taking his practice exam, do you think my younger brother took the time to learn all the different question types and answer choice pathologies? Go ahead and type into the chat what you think. Yeah, I see the majority of you saying no, and you are right. These students who seem to have a natural gift for cars never took the time to learn these cheat codes. So how do they destroy the car section with seemingly no effort? We will get to that after the next two methods you need to avoid. Next up, question-focused strategies. Almost every cars training out there focuses on how to answer the questions. This is true for the two previously mentioned approaches, but wait, there are more. These question-focused strategies get as outlandish as reading the questions first and then reading the passage. I have never seen that work for anyone ever. First of all, it is a huge waste of time since you end up reading all the questions multiple times. Second of all, it is impossible to properly understand the questions without first having a general understanding of the passage please don't fall for these crazy tactics. You see, the main issue with a questions-focused approach is that when you truly, truly understand the passage, answering the questions correctly just happens naturally. For someone like my younger brother, who is innately good at cars, they spend very little time on the questions. When you shift all your focus onto the questions, you start spending way too much time pouring over and wavering back and forth between the questions. How many of you find yourselves stuck perpetually between two answer choices? Type a two into the chat if this describes you. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of twos. And this is totally normal when you are struggling with cars. The technique I will be teaching you will help you overcome this. Finally, the secret methodology. And this one is my personal favorite. There are people out there, and I won't name names, but they try to convince you that they've reverse engineered the car section and that they know the secret methodology that anyone can learn. They say, if you can even just understand the words in a picture book, 
you have what it takes to get a 132 on cars if you just learn my secret methodology. They have a step-by-step -step approach for every single question that anyone can follow, which will result in answering any AMC question correctly, even if you just started learning English three months ago. It sounds very convincing. Once again, don't fall for it. I've talked to many students who have been through these expensive programs only to improve their score by zero points, remaining at a 121 car score. So why don't these seemingly amazing car strategies work? Well, it's because they are misunderstanding what the car section truly is. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, well, well Andrew, what's wrong with at least learning all of these different approaches? The problem with that is that you are overcomplicating cars. The best approach is a simple approach that you can implement consistently every time you sit down and take a car's passage. That is why I focus on teaching my students one car's approach that always works. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to head over to mcatselfprep.com to watch the full 60 minute strategy session. At the end of that session, you'll get the links to 100 plus cars passages and a special coupon towards my ultimate car strategy course. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel for some more MCAT study tips. And as always, feel free to comment below and me or one of my tutors will get back to you soon. We're here to help. See you next time, guys.